Intermittent fasting, is it effective or just a fad? You may have heard of the hot new trend of intermittent fasting, but do you know how it actually works? We're going to dive into the pros, cons, and differences to comparable eating strategies. Intermittent fasting is a form of fasting in which you don't consume any calories for a certain period of time. While more research is needed, this eating pattern has been found to help with weight loss and improve health. It can be particularly helpful for several conditions, such as diabetes. There are three main types of intermittent fasting, the 16-8, the 5-2, and the 24-hour fast. The most popular of the three techniques is the 16-8 fast, in which you consume all your meals in an 8-hour window and eat nothing for the remaining 16 hours. In the 5-2 plan, you eat like usual for 5 days and then eat 500 calories in the remaining 2 days of the week. In the 24-hour fast, you eat one meal a day and then don't consume any more calories for the rest of the day. Many people find it difficult to fast. People tend to overeat after fasting, so it can be difficult to stick to the plan. But if you do, how would intermittent fasting work and affect your body? Well, after our body goes without food for 12 hours, it starts using glycogen, which is stored glucose energy in the liver. Once that runs out, the body starts using fat for energy instead of glucose. The benefit of this is that fatty tissue decreases, which can lead to weight loss. Intermittent fasting can also potentially reduce cardiovascular problems and improve artery health by decreasing inflammation and the presence of harmful fat substances in the blood. Intermittent fasting promotes a rest and digest state in your body. Through this, it can help decrease high blood pressure. Intermittent fasting also lowers insulin levels and increases our body's sensitivity to glucose. This decreases the risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Research has shown that independent of food intake and weight loss in humans, intermittent fasting can still be a useful strategy in treating prediabetes and prehypertension. Because you are restricting your intake of food, there are some risks. For example, one can get nutritional deficiencies and experience dizziness, insomnia, or general weakness. It's important to stay hydrated while fasting. For those who already have diabetes, another risk is hypoglycemia or low blood sugar. While the benefits of intermittent fasting outweigh the risks for certain populations, other people are more sensitive and may be advised against this eating pattern. For example, pregnant and lactating women, children, older adults, those with a history of eating disorders, and those with various illnesses or hormonal imbalances. Before you start any fasting regimen, it's crucial that you consult your doctor. Now, how does intermittent fasting compare to the conventional calorie restriction strategy to lose weight? Historically, the most common method of weight management is to continuously reduce the calories eaten per day. This is different from intermittent fasting, which focuses on when you eat food rather than what and how much food you eat. Many people prefer intermittent fasting over traditional caloric restriction because for some people, once they start eating, they find it difficult to eat in moderation. Further, intermittent fasting tends to prevent people from nighttime snacking, which has been linked to a higher risk of obesity and type 2 diabetes. However, in terms of promoting weight loss and metabolic improvements, both intermittent fasting and continuous energy restriction produce similar results. While intermittent fasting has been shown to slightly decrease insulin levels, it's unclear whether this is clinically relevant. More research is needed to better understand the long-term effects of intermittent fasting. Overall, while intermittent fasting is safe and effective, it's unclear whether this regimen provides benefit over traditional dieting in regards to weight loss. Regardless, the potential health benefits associated with intermittent fasting should not be overlooked. This eating pattern is a promising and possibly a more beneficial alternative to conventional dieting. We just need to wait and see whether more solid evidence can be found in the future.